a great pleasure for me to be here with you guys tonight, um, especially the, uh, the women athletes from Augustana College. Um, I'm going to say a few things more about that later, but, but you guys are, are the luckiest people around because you're getting to play sports, things that you love doing, and you're getting a first class education while you're doing it. And, and usually the, those two things kind of go hand in hand. I hope you're getting a little financial aid on, along the way as well. <laughs> so, um, I, was, I was talking to Jenny Brown for a couple minutes. Um, I was a little bit late showing up tonight. Um, uh, and uh, so Jenny informed me, you're supposed to be lead off. <laughs> I said, no, Jenny, it was the deal was I was going to be clean up. <laughs> so, um, a number of years ago, uh, before most of you, all, all of you who are Augustana students were born, I got a very, very great gift in my life. And I got that gift, right there is the woman, Pam Johnson Murrah, who, um, see, what, the way it happened was this. We, my husband and family and I lived up in International Falls, Minnesota, considered the ice box of the nation. And uh, he got recruited to come and be the campus pastor down here at Augustana. Started, you know, in January 1977. And uh, he was always one who loved to visit and loved to find out about everybody else and how everybody else is doing. So um, probably in February, maybe sometime, Pam, being the good um, Lutheran that she is, and the welcoming person that she is, it was her senior year, she went in to say hi to the new campus pastor. So he, he started asking, you know, well, what's been going on in your life? And she said, well, one of the things is that, um, you know, I'm a senior, I'm about to play my last year of softball. I've been, I'm in a, a three-sport athlete for all four years, and it's my final sport, and my final year of softball, and we don't have a coach. Season is two weeks away. And my husband, oh, he said, my wife could do that. <laughs> and uh, I think he went to Bonnie Allman maybe, and Bonnie went to, was it Mel Klein at that time? And pretty soon I got a phone call and they said, hey, we got a deal for you. Want to coach the softball team for 500 bucks? <laughs> sure, sure. I didn't have very much background, but man, did I learn a lot in a big, big hurry. And where's Paige? She was sitting right next to you. There she is, Paige Drew Kern. Uh, so Paige, you were a junior then, I think. Yeah. But on my very first team, I am so thrilled that you guys are here. That is awesome. So that's how I got this very great gift in my life, because... Now this is uh, Title IX, 40th anniversary of Title IX. And I think, you know, probably most of you women have been playing sports since you were younger, right? Since you were little, maybe. And you had teams to play on and, it, and everything was fine and okay and good. Uh, but when I grew up, I am so old that <laughs> women, not only could women not play sports and there were no activities, for women in terms of sports, but you were called names if you played sports. You were called names like Tomboy, which was a very derogatory name. So well, what was I going to do? I've always loved athletics and movement and sports. It's just been one of the things that I've lived for. So I had to kind of sneak around the neighborhood because the boys all wanted me to play with them because they were always looking for you know, an extra person on the team, whether it was baseball or basketball or football, tackle football, or a street hockey or whatever it was. So once in a while they'd come and get me. They are kind of embarrassed at the door. My mother said, you know, can Sandy come out and play? <laughs> but then there were these girls that lived in the neighborhood who were a few years older, and I oh, was so embarrassed when they'd see me playing sports because it just wasn't okay. So, you know, going forward, Title IX came along and it changed everything. And I am so thrilled for women today because you didn't even think about it. You've never even thought about how it might have been different a while back, not even that long ago. 
you know. So it is so awesome, and I'm, I just want to jump up and down and scream about Title IX, how great it is, and what it's done for women, and not just in athletics, but really it kind of, you know, morphed into all the other fields as well. So I'm all about celebrating Title IX. So what I have up here for my notes, Jenny was so organized and Kelsey was, where's Kelsey? Where is she? <coughs> there she is. Man, she had a PowerPoint or everything I'm going on. <laughs> anyway, what my husband used to do when he preached his sermons, <clears throat> he'd take um, a business card, turn it over, and um, write some chicken scratching on the back that nobody could read. I don't even think he could read it. You know, maybe points one, two, and three, that was his sermon. So I kind of did the same thing here tonight. And uh, I can't read as well as I used to be able to read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, it's dark in here. Yeah. I do have lots of things that I want to say, um, but I'm not going to say a lot of them. I want to tell you about a few proud moments um, in, my, in my history with Augustana College, first the, the proudest was just getting invited to be a coach. That was like, wow, because, okay, so I didn't have anything, you know, any other sports that I could legitimately do when I was growing up. Well, I got to be a part of women's teams, and because I was a dual sport coach for 12 years, I got to be part of 39 collegiate teams. 39. I was on the team. It was just awesome. And I guess one of my proudest moments was just that. Every time I got to practice with my girls, every time I got to coach a game, oh my gosh, it was fabulous. Uh, another proud moment was when I got to be on the selection committee back in the late 80s, I think it was, when we were selecting a new women's basketball coach. And I got to carefully explain to the powers that be, i.e. the president of the college then, that no Title IX, following Title IX and, and being true to Title IX did not mean that you had to hire a woman as a coach. It meant that you had to hire the best coach that you could find for the women's team. At least that was my interpretation. And so I I obviously thought that man sitting his wall over there was the very best we could get. And boy, we got him, and he has made us proud. Wow. Now, another thing, another event and life experience and four year experience that makes me so proud is he came Corey over here. And Kim played for me for four years. And I should also mention that Dave's daughter, Julie, was the pitcher in that national championship. Kim Corey was a senior that year. Kim was a four-time first-team All-American in softball, which is on just, I don't think that's ever been repeated here. And she hit in the winning run um, so that we, uh, we won, I think it was in, Ten innings, maybe? Yeah. And she hit in the winning run as a senior. I mean, you know, you can't really finish off a collegiate career any better than that. So another very, very, very proud moment. Another proud moment was when Tracy and his team won another national championship for Augustana. I mean, that is just sensational. That is such a grueling sport. on the golf team, my gosh. I mean, they go to they go to national so often that we're like, oh my God. <laughs> but I mean, seriously, it is something really, really, really to be proud of. What is it, six or seven years in a row, I think? Five? No, just five. <laughs> There'll be six this year. So um, I guess, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm going to say that everybody here tonight, it's so fun to see all of you. I know many, many of you, and you're very, very special and dear friends, and I could hang out all night talking with you, and I, had, I, get, I hope I get a chance to talk to some more of you before, um, before you all have to go. But especially in terms of all the student athletes that are here, um, every one of you is a winner. 
um, and I mean that most sincerely. You are on a team, um, a great team. You are at a great school, and you're having a phenomenal experience. Spring sports, I am so sorry about the weather because I understand how that feels. You know, I've been there, done that, and uh, in fact, we used to shovel off the softball field back in the day. But it's just, it's just tough for spring sports, and so you just have to uh, keep your uh, mental attitude very tough and very strong. I just can tell one teensy little story. I could tell many stories, but I, I have heard that there, during World War II, there was um, a great pianist who was put in, in a concentration camp, and I think for 16 months sat there came out and within a week played this concert and just played fantastically well. And somebody said, how can you do that? You didn't practice for 16 months. How can you just come out and play? I said, oh, but I did practice. I did practice. I practiced up here. There's something to be learned there for all of us. It's what's up here and how you think about things and how you think about life. And if you didn't get a little turnaround with Kelsey's story here, I've got some others for you. I mean, talk about grit and mental attitude. And that is, that is the most important thing. You can practice physically, but really it's Yogi Berra say something like, what did he say about something? It's, it's all about how mentally tough you are. I can't, can't say the, the quote about how he said it, which of course was very quaint. And by the way, somebody have that? Speaking of baseball, my 10-year-old grandson wanted to go to the Twins game Friday night. It was 30 degrees. <laughs> but of course I took him, and we had a blast. <laughs> Except, you know, the team, I just got to warn you, might not be our year today, this year with the Twins. <clears throat> but anyway, um, <laughs> I'll tell you one little story about uh, my coaching career as, as, uh, as in softball. Um, um, we uh, played some team over at um, that park by the river over there. What is that park again? Cherry Rock. Cherry Rock, thank you. And so we had loaded up a couple of bandfuls of girls and driven them over, and you're laughing because you know the story. And um, I took Sarah and Mike along with me. There's a playground over there. Sarah was four. And Mike was five and a half, I think, at the time. And so we had this game, and it was, of course, for me, every single game was intense. <laughs> I, I look back at how I was, and I laughed. But um, anyway, um, just, a, just a tad competitive is what it was, just a tad. <laughs> so game was over, you know, talked about the you know, game and everything. Loaded all the girls up, back to Augie. Get into the gym, we had a little meeting, and one of the players said, Oh my gosh, Coach, where are Mike and Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> one of the worst moments of my life. <laughs> I, I went racing back to Cherry Rock Park, and they weren't there, and I, and I went home. And what had happened was Sarah had looked around and seen that Mom wasn't there anymore. So she started crying. So Mike goes, don't cry. And then he started crying. <laughs> so some kind uh, young couple that was there came over and found out what the deal was. I'm sure they thought, what a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Took them home. Anyway, that's my story about coaching. <laughs> I was focused. <laughs> I see Doc standing over here by the wall. And before I went up, he told me to give him hell. But that's about all the hell I have. To get to. <laughs> But it's been great. Thanks, uh, thanks for listening, and um, thanks for being here, and um, yay, Augie. <laughs> <laughs>